Hey, this is Russ. I'm back out on the bike. Yeah, today is Wednesday, as I promised. I was gonna try to do it on Wednesday. Now, today, if I'm lucky, my audio recorder, my digital audio recorder should be picking up the audio this time. I figured out why I had a problem last time. You know, I'm using this uh, knit cap underneath my new helmet. And as I said, the, the new helmet is rather tight. So by the time you put the knit cap on there too, it kind of displaced where the, uh, let me go up here. It kind of displaced where the microphone was on the side of my helmet. So when it got pushed, it pushed the windscreen off of it. Luckily I didn't lose the windscreen. Now technically this is one of our paths that we take, but you know, it's, uh, it's been fairly warm for the last couple of days and uh, I figured I'd give it a try. If it gets too wet down into certain areas, then of course I'll, I'll turn around and go somewhere else, but we might have some water. Like I see some water up ahead, but that's, that's on the grass. Let me slow down a little bit. Can you guys see these little stakes? This, there's a green one, and then over on this side, there's a orange one. I think they do plow this thing. Otherwise, why would they stake it out like that? Yeah, I think so. The last ride that we did, I, I kind of missed having the better audio. Now, I'm not saying that the GoPro doesn't give us good audio, because it, it does, it picks up but it picks up a little too much, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's a little noisier with the surrounding sounds. And uh, so having a lavalier mic is better because it's kind of just looking at the closest things that it's hearing, which of course would be my voice rather than um, you know the sound of my tires going on the, the path, although you do still hear it. So people are out and about current weather right now I believe uh, it's about 52 53 degrees it should hit at least 54 I think a little bit later okay, it is a little tight here all right passing on your left thank you Sometimes you hit people with the bell and either they don't hear it or they don't know what they're supposed to do. Well, here in the United States, <laughs> we, we walk on the right side, okay, not on the left. And the passing side is the left lane. And as you know, on the last ride too, the other guy wasn't too happy with me passing him. First off, he was probably wasn't happy with the fact that I was on the sidewalk. But the fact that uh, he started walking towards the right and I already said I was on his right. So he was walking right into me, essentially. But uh, yeah, he, he didn't get hit or anything like that. I wasn't that close to him, but he kind of felt that I was infringing on his, on his right to be there. Things like that happen, you know, what can you do? <laughs> All right, so there's a little bit of water, but it's not like it's frozen stuff. I was advised by one of my friends on Facebook that it was foolish to go out on the path with all the snow out there. Well, it wasn't really snow until the tail end. <laughs> and, uh, oh, this, uh, li this little lake here is still frozen. You can still see ice, but I'm sure it's not stable ice. So yeah, I didn't know that there was uh, snow there because all the other areas wasn't. On your left. So sometimes you just don't know what you're gonna encounter. And really, I had no other choice. I had, I could have gone back, but I'm gonna run into that guy again. <laughs> Didn't want to do that. <laughs> Overall, this is still uh, pretty nice. Now, I said before, what's saving me from this uh, current temperature is the hat. It's the little knit cap underneath my helmet. I think if you can keep your head warm, the rest of you feel warm as well but I, I do have a lot of stuff on right now I have 
the same stuff on. I've got a long pair of jeans on. I've got a sweatshirt on. I've got a jacket on. I've got a safety vest on. I've got gloves on. So I'm fairly well insulated. So yeah, I could do 50 degrees, but if I didn't have the hat, I don't know about that. I think the hat is a key element. I appreciate you guys watching the, uh, the analysis of the first ride. Because I looked at it afterwards too. You know, I don't really know what's happening until I get to see it just like you guys do. Because I'm editing it. And even then, sometimes I don't see it. <laughs> but I watch it again and... Yeah, you know that... Uh, that radar... That radar uh, detector thing said I was doing, what was it saying? Um, I don't know, was it 12 or 13 miles or something? At the time when it was radaring me, that was around the, the, the speed I was going. And apparently my, uh, my bike sped up just a tad more by the time I actually looked down and, and read it. So yeah, maybe those radar, the radar things are correct. <laughs> The knee feels a little better today. You know, the day after that first ride, I felt it uh, in my, uh, my artificial knee. And uh, today's better. We'll see what happens after today. And we only did seven miles on that first ride. I don't know what we'll do today. I don't plan to go out really long today either. I have some things I need to do. So uh, yeah, we might do another seven. <laughs> Now most of my rides, as you know, is a lot more than seven miles in general. But I think taking it easy on the first couple of rides is not a bad idea. So let's give some statistics again. We're doing uh, pedal assist level three. I am uh, going back and forth between gear six and seven. Right now I'm on seven. I'm trying to pedal a little bit more today if I can. I gotta get my knee back in shape. And uh, I told you guys that I was gonna check out to see how, I'm gonna drop this back down to six, how the uh, startup was when I throttled. Because now the battery is fully charged to 100% level. And a 54 volt battery after you charge it 100% comes out to 58 point whatever, three, four, I don't know what it was, I can't remember. So I throttled up hard as I started up, and yep, I got more kick. <laughs> so when the battery level was down to the 70% or less level, and I hit the uh, I hit the uh, throttle, I didn't have the same kind of get up and go. So as your battery wears down in power, it seems to affect. Uh, the throttling. Now, I mentioned too that I throttle and pedal at the same time a lot of times so you'll see over here look on my right hand you'll see that I'll push down on here but I'm still pedaling right now <laughs> okay and sometimes you cannot see you cannot see that, uh, that the bike is shifting back and forth. Now if I'm not if I'm not throttling and I'm pedaling by itself oftentimes you'll actually see the bike moving side to side because of the, uh, the, pr the pressure on the pedals but when you throttle and pedal, like I am right now, a lot of times you can't tell. I don't want think, people thinking that all I ever do is uh, throttle all the time. So, <laughs> I gave him a, a right turn signal with my left hand with a pointed finger. <laughs> That's because I was throttling with the right hand. And uh, I really don't like the other right turn signal with your left hand. You know how that works, right? It's like uh, straight up like this. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything to a lot of people. A lot of people don't even know what that means. But before, you know, if, if you're driving a car, you can't stick a right hand out. So if you're sticking your, your left hand out the window, sticking it up means you're turning right. Sticking it across means you're turning left. Sticking it down means you're stopping. But on a bicycle, really not that necessary so the accepted 
thing to do nowadays is you could either do that with the left hand or you can just stick your right arm out. And I think it's pretty easy to recognize when the right arm, when the right arm goes out, you're turning right. <laughs> so that's my preference, but I was throttling at the time so I couldn't do that. Pointing is kind of stupid though. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but we were both looking at each other so I knew that he was seeing me so I knew he would understand what I meant by doing that. All right, so we had turned on here. We just made it a circle. Let's just go back up here again. Oh, there, there's one thing I did want to mention. You know, I was reading some of the various uh, Facebook groups and it was mentioned about, you know, getting up and starting up on your bike. And I do what many people do. Um, I don't do what I used to do. What, what we used to do on bicycles to get up and start riding on a bike is we'll put our foot, our left foot, let's say, on the pedal and then push down on the pedal and swing our leg over. And as the bike is moving forward, we jump onto the seat, right? Don't do that with, a, with an e-bike, all right? It's too heavy of a bike and it's very hard to, to, to do it. Um, my suggestion is stand over the bike just like stra straddle the bike and then uh, as you step up with your foot and to sit onto the bike push the throttle down slowly okay that moves the bike forward then you sit on the bike and then you're moving forward it's actually safer doing it that way than it is to try to push the bike forward <laughs> by pedaling down and then swinging your leg over while the bike is actually in motion forward it's it's how we used to probably do it in the past with our, our bikes when we were younger, but personally, I don't think it's as safe. So I just wanted to put that out there uh, for anyone who's you know new to an e-bike. Um, take advantage of some of the technology you have. You, you have a throttle, it will help you in that type of situation, okay? Now, I would say I have used the throttle quite a bit um, over the last year. When I get, uh, you know, if I'm slowing down at a stop sign and I need to get up again and running, running you'll immediately see me hit the throttle <laughs> because that, that gets me my speed back and then I'll let go and I'll start pedaling again. So I think a lot of this just comes from the experience of doing it. I'm fully pedaling right now. You can see I'm, I'm, not, uh, <laughs> I'm not on the throttle right here on the right hand. I think right now this is the only portion that has some water. It's around, around these areas see, because it's a lot of shade here, right? So since there's a lot of shade, uh, I'm sure the snow didn't melt as quickly. And so now as it's starting to melt off, got water on the on the pavement but yeah it's good to get out I feel good uh, being out on the bike eventually when everything is all cleared through we'll go back to Bussy Woods and we'll do the North Branch uh, trail again I think it's called the North Branch Trail because it's, it's near the North Branch of the Chicago River. So uh, I think that's where the name comes from. You know, there's other trails too. There's like the Des Plaines, uh, Des Plaines River Trail. I, uh, I won't do that because uh, it is uh, some gravel paths there. And as you know, um, I'm hesitant on going those, on those type of things with my knee replacement you know the chances are I probably won't fall but you know if I do <laughs> it's not worth it in my opinion I, I, I personally I prefer these paths that are paved it seems safer for me and um, and uh, not worth the uh, the risk to that uh, replaced knee So people are out. I don't know if this is 
same guy with the dog, I think. I'm not sure. I think it is. Thank you. You know, a lot of times if, if a person's way over and on the right, I won't hit, I will not hit them with the bell. Because I think uh, by the time they even hear me and react, I'm already gone anyways. But if they're kind of zigzaggy or they're not sure, then I will. Or if they have a dog, sometimes I will hit them with the bell. Or if you got two people here, for instance. So let's take a left. Let's see what's down this road. I've, I've gone down this other road as well. I think a lot of times coming back from, uh, from the Fussy Woods area. We'll go off on here. See, this road is designated bike route. So, uh, so a lot of times you get bikes uh, traveling through here as well as cars and Cars are more aware, hopefully they're more aware that there's going to be bikes on the same road. But the lady that uh, we just passed, it was on my right, she waved me on. So I always wave a thank you when that happens. So that they know that I'm acknowledging them, that they are letting me through. If you just go forward after they wave you on and they don't think you've seen them, they may actually go forward and then they'll run into you. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. I'm not going to cross the big street that's over there. That's where we usually go to when we uh, head towards the Busty Woods. I'm just going to turn here. There's a lot of these streets on the side that I'm not familiar with. And of course, I don't know where I'm heading here. But you got a GPS. <laughs> if you get lost, you could always GPS your way back home, right? I, uh, I actually like looking at the houses too when I'm going up and down side streets that I'm not familiar with. I want to see how other people live and what their houses look like, what the streets look like. So two and a half months out from riding, yeah, I, I don't feel like it's been two and a half months while I'm on the bike. I don't feel like I gotta learn this all over again. I do feel pretty comfortable back out on the bike. It's like I hadn't stopped at all. Let's take a right over here, maybe. And then here, as I'm taking the right turn, I'll kind of coast and then use the throttle to take me through the turn. I do that quite a bit too. Yep, always watch for uh, cars backing out of their, their driveways. Sometimes they can't see you. So I do keep my lights on when I'm riding in the sunlight. Um, the main reason I bought this light here is because, you know, it blinks. The, the light that comes on the Rad Rover doesn't blink, although it's connected to the battery. What I like about that, though, is that, you know, when I pull the brakes, the rear tail light lights up. And then I have a uh, blinking tail light that came with this light here, too. I have a blinking one down there. So I have the blinking one in the back running. I have the blinking one in the front running. And then when I pull on the handlebars, or hand, hand brakes, handlebars, uh, the brake light lights up. I think that works out well. These uh, accessory lights will last quite a few hours. I, f I forgot what the total hours is, but I, I can go several rides without charging this thing. So I didn't charge it when I got back and I probably won't charge it when I get back from this ride either. So we've done five and a half miles since I started the recording. 
I reset the uh, the thing from the recording point. I usually don't start my recording right as I leave the house. I usually go some distance first and then I'll kick it in. So I've gone more than five and a half miles, really. But we'll call it five and a half. I'm gonna go for at least 10 today, if not more. I mean, really, it, it feels pretty good out here. I don't feel cold at all. And like I said, it's because my head is warm. They say you lose a lot of heat through your head. So yeah, for, for those who bought the burn helmets, all right, and there's affiliate links in the description of all my bike videos. The ones that uh, have the burn helmets, they, they tell you to take a measurement of your head size. I was at the, almost at the upper limit of this medium size. I think it was one centimeter off the maximum limit, something like that. So I really wondered whether I could actually get a knit cap underneath it. If you have a very, very thin one, knit cap, um, it'll fit underneath. If it's anything more than very thin, forget it. <laughs> it's gonna be too tight then. Yeah, I should turn there, there's, uh, okay. <laughs> ah, we'll go around this way, let's see what's out here. I'm sure I've traveled this area before. Sometimes I just don't remember. A lot of times I'm riding around, I don't really pay that much attention to what the streets are or anything. I just go where the map tells me to go. I don't have the map on now. Yeah, so let's talk about the maps a little bit. I use uh, Google Maps and I also use a map program called bike map it's a it's an app okay so you could download that for free you could do the payment thing too if you want you could pay for bike map I think they give you some advanced features but you could do it for free that's what I do and I find that both maps will give you two different ways of getting to certain places <laughs> so what I do is I you know I put the destination where I want to go and then I will manually move across the uh, the, the bike map just to see which which uh, streets it's picked for me and if it's picked streets that I know is heavily traveled I won't use it and then I'll check the other map and sometimes that'll give you a better choice so yeah I recommend you try both all right so where are we here I think we're on the other side of that lake because if you look to the left here I don't know if I can angle let me see if I grab the thing and angle it you guys see that? <laughs> that goes to the lake. But I am definitely not going on this street. So I will swing around. And it looks like they have a little swing around point here. <laughs> so I'm just kind of hopping along right now. I'm not riding. And let's just move on over here. All right, so I'll just jump up here real quick. <laughs> I don't. I would not do a quick U-turn like that because I know that I've done that stuff before. And that's one time I fell on the left because this uh, bike is not very nimble. I find it easier to hop off and just inch along a little bit. Seems to work better. I'm still sniffling. <laughs> Even though it's a lot warmer today than it was yesterday I wouldn't say a lot I'm talking maybe three degrees warmer but uh, yeah the three degrees makes a difference right, so this this road is a circular thing we're gonna have to go around it, it does make a difference three degrees Remember that uh, the game people used to play? It's like uh, Seven Degrees to Bev Kevin Bacon. Remember that? Is that called Seven Degrees? Look, I've hit another dead end here. <laughs> oh, cul de sac. I'll turn around. Remember that game that uh, if you trace things around, 
you could find that uh, everyone seems to be seven degrees from Kevin Bacon. Was it seven? I don't know how many degrees off you're supposed to be. Let's try here. Well, anyways, uh, technically I am two degrees from Bruce Lee. And I did a video about that, but I'll tell you the story here anyways for the new guys. Yeah, I'm two degrees from Bruce Lee. Here's how. Remember the uh, movie Ip Man? You guys get to watch that martial arts movie, Ip Man? Ip Man was uh, Bruce Lee's uh, Kung Fu teacher. And it is called Kung Fu, not Kung Fu. <laughs> um, yeah, he was, he was the, the guy that taught Bruce Lee martial arts. Okay, we gotta turn this way. And, uh, well, my grand uncle was a student of Ip Man, as is Bruce Lee, and he was a uh, he was a classmate of Bruce Lee in that Kung Fu school. Yeah, so they both learned uh, martial arts from Ip Man, and since he is my direct relative, being a grand uncle, that makes him one degree from Bruce Lee because he knows him personally. Know, knew him personally, I should say. Knew of both of them personally. And uh, I would be two degrees then from Bruce Lee and two degrees from Ip Man. And because you know me now through my YouTube channel, that makes you guys three degrees from Bruce Lee and three degrees from Ip Man. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, okay, it's no real big deal, right? <laughs> it's cool to some people. Alright, <laughs> I'm just going around in circles. I, don't, I get lost really quick without my GPS. And so I'm just turning and saying, okay, did we go left? Did we go right? Where did we go? Okay, I know we probably have to go left, but this truck is in my way. I don't want to turn in front of them, so I'm going to have to turn around. So I've made my right turn just to avoid them. Let's go through here. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. What is it called? It's an electric bike. It's an electric bike. I'm yeah. right. I live so close. <laughs> and I work here. And I should... I'm going to get it. Yeah. So all the police officers have it? I'm not a police officer. I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I was. I really thought that you were you a wearing no, one. Okay, which is a good idea. Yeah, it's just for safety. You wear a vest. I yeah. love it. Do you mind asking, like, how much do you pay for it? Well, these things vary, but I think the least expensive electric bike you can buy is probably about $1,000. That's it? Yeah, this one here cost me $1,700, but since I put a lot of stuff on it, it's probably closer to about $3,000. $3,000? Yeah, Love but, it. but you can get it for a lot cheaper than that, believe me. And it, you, you just, but you, can you bike it the other yeah, way too? Yeah, you, you can ride it, and then there's a throttle here, so if you don't want to pedal, you can just go. I changed my batteries too. Because so I have a different battery. battery. Yeah, it's the batteries right here. Oh. So I put I a. I just I, love it. I put a bigger battery so I can go distance. Yeah. So I bought a second one of these, and yeah. then I mount it over here. So when this one dies, I, I plug in the second battery. That's so a smart I, thing to do. I, I can do about 90 miles. 90 miles in those. Yeah. Wow, awesome. So, but do you pedal mode or do? You... <laughs> now, you got a now you had a choice. Sorry. Yeah, probably about 50 50. Is it 50 yeah. 50? Yeah, I had, I had a knee replacement done. Okay. So I bought the bike to help rehab my knee. Yes. yes. And so uh, as of last year, it helped quite a bit. So yeah. this is the second time out this, this season. Sure. So, well, you look like a police officer. <laughs> well, I used, to work in law, I used to work in law enforcement, but oh, I'm not a cop did? now. Oh, no, no, not anymore. I yeah. love it. What company is this? This one is Rad Power Bikes. Red power bikes. Right. Here local? No, oh. most of these things are all online now. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's a U.S. company. They're based in, I think, Seattle, Washington. Yeah. But they're probably the largest um, bike company for e-bikes. For e-bikes? Yeah. So they start, I think they start a little bit about 1,100 with theirs. Yeah. And then they work up to about 2,000. Yeah. And then if you That's add good. things, then of course it adds more to the cost. So, yeah. I am getting it. Yeah, go get I one. <laughs> and why do I bring my S? I mean, once the winter's over, I yeah. don't need my SUV, Dana. Then yeah. I can just. You can just bike it. <laughs> I have done regular biking. Uh -huh. and the kids ask me, why 
is it, Mr. Ann? Don't you have a car? And I said, no, I love to buy <laughs> The but thing is, though, um, uh, these are the most stolen bicycles because you got to be course. really careful. Of so course. if you if you bike it and leave it somewhere, it's, you need a really, really, really heavy-duty bike lock. Ah, but um, I I have uh, two bike locks that I put on here, but I, I've never really left it. I only, I only went to a Chinese uh, carryout once to pick up Chinese food. And that's it. I don't leave my I don't leave my bike anywhere. Hey, I don't blame you. Yeah. And again, I'm happy that you said that. But again, my husband is we 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 were all biking family. We did a lot of regular biking. We used to just take it to different trails and yeah. just bike. But he took it to the city once. Uh -huh. we, we went to watch a game. So he would park his car, yeah. you know, and then he would bike on the uh, he biked the rest of the to to the game. Uh-huh. He well what a, he didn't even have a ticket that day. He just went for, friends were doing tailgating. Uh -huh. He went for tailgating, but they had an extra ticket. They said, why don't you just come? Whatever. Right. So rather than going and properly like parking it where it should be, he left it. And it was a very nice area of tailgating, not just any area. But you know, like these poles, there was a smaller pole. He put his bike around. They lifted it over the pole, Somebody right? Somebody just came. Lifted, lifted it up. Lifted it out the pole. I said, how dumb is yeah. that? Why would you do that? Yeah. So, and he likes to have, like, you have a front thing. And, you know, he, it was an equipped bike. He right. left his helmet there. I said, okay, whosoever got it. <laughs> they got everything. Got it with everything. I hope they enjoy it. That's all I can just say. You well, know? these are heavy. Uh, but these are heavy. You can't they, do they, that. Well, right. this, this starts at 69 pounds. But because I carry everything on here, it's about 110 pounds right now. Yes. I love so. the look. I, I love it. I'm, thank you for introducing me. Yeah, no I problem. knew about it, but just never thought. Yeah, and... just look up electric bikes, and you'll find a lot of companies selling them now. Yes. But that's uh, there's even uh, they're they're talking about some type of legislation where the government might actually subsidize thirty percent back to you. Because it's an electric bike. Right. Up to like three hundred dollars. They so haven't they haven't done it yet. This is rad? Rad, R A D. Rad. Just rad. Okay. Rad power bikes. Rad power bikes. They're they're the largest, uh, probably both most well known electric bike out Wonderful. there but there's a lot of companies out there a lot of them are you know they're all made in china or somewhere like that of but course. but uh rad is a u.s company and they have a really good customer service so yes, I'm going that's to why i did it i think we're done with anything you look is made in china. <laughs> it is <laughs> thank you okay thank and you enjoy. thanks There you go. I don't know how much of that you guys heard. If you if it comes out on the thing, I'll I'll let it run so you can hear what she had to say. I don't know whether you see her on the video or not. I tried to angle a little bit, but so yeah, uh, you get stopped sometimes by people. They they see your bike and they they make comments about it. All right. So where are we? <laughs> I have no idea where we are. How long have we been recording? <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting to, uh, to stop there and talk for that long, but she seemed to have an interest, so hey, yeah. Maybe she'll buy an e-bike one day. All right. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to make this thing too much longer for you guys, but at least... Uh, at least you got to hear what somebody else was thinking. Okay, yeah, we should not have gone this way. We should have gone the other way. <laughs> All right, let's just turn here. I'll just go around. So, I think that should be about it for today for you guys. <laughs> I'm going to keep riding. We're only at 7.8 miles, but... Uh, Okay, now I know where I am. But, uh, yeah. I think it's enough for you guys. <laughs> I'll drag this thing out. Hey, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We'll do more rides in the future. Stay tuned for that. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.